So what you see up today on our screen is Genesis 16.1. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. True. God's in control of childbirth. I pray thee, go into my maid. Bad news. Bad news. It may be that I obtain children by her, proxy. And that's where our trouble is right now, verse 2. Because God had promised Sarai and Abram a child. God did not promise a child through Hagar and Abram, but through Abram and Sarai. And Abram hearkened unto the voice of Sarai. Wrong. Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. And Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Cana and gave her to her husband, Abram, to wife. That's wrong. Nowhere does, does the Bible where God approve of two wives, three wives, four wives. Now, it happened. God didn't approve of it. As a matter of fact, when you get into the law and then when you get into the church writings, the epistles. It's forbidden. Paul writes, let a man have a wife, not wives. Someone's wrong with the Mormon doctrine. They went unto Hagar and she conceived. She had a baby. She got pregnant. When she saw that she had conceived, her mistress, Sarai, had despised her in her eyes. Oh, you know. She got pregnant. So the problem was with Sarai. Sarai's womb. Now she's giving this woman over to her husband and she's pregnant. Her husband has now had an affair with another woman at her liking. No more liking anymore. And Sarai said unto Abram, her, her husband, My wrong will be upon me. True. Too late, Sarai. You cannot go and undo the sin that you just done. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. Correct. And when I saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. You know, hey, guys, hey, hey, I got a baby. You couldn't have a baby. The Lord judged between me and thee. When you are when you sin, don't go asking God to judge you. Go repenting and confessing. But look, he says, My wrong be upon me. I've done wrong, but it's your fault, Abram. This is Adam blaming Eve, and Eve blamed the serpent. It was Sarai's fault for coming up with the, the, the hair brain screen. Oh, here, take my handmaid. And Abram himself should have said, no. I mean, you got Genesis 3 back in Genesis 16. So the sin has happened. God said, set a standard. God has set a way. God has set a path. God has set a plan. And we run into trouble. And Hagar takes off, runs away. She meets the angel of the Lord. First time the Bible, the angel of the Lord shows up, shows up to a runaway slave who is the wife of Abram. And look at chapter 16, verse 11 here. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Hagar, behold, thou art with child. She's pregnant. And shall bear a son. Prophecy. And shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard thy affliction. And the affliction came from Sarai. Verse 12. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. 
He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. This is Ishmael. Now, I heard President Biden rules, I read the other day online, that he has a, a, a plan by September 11th, I believe, of this year. He's going to pull what I believe, and I have hardly read the thing, so, but he wants to pull the tropes out of Afghanistan. Do you know who Ishmael is? Ishmael is your Arabians. Ishmael is your Middle Easterns. He's your Islam. 2021, we are still dealing with the wild man of Genesis 16, 12. Because Sarah concocted in her mind that God is not able. God can't do wonders and, and miracles. Here, honey, take my handmaid. And we in the world today, the United States troops and, and, and the English troops and all the troops in the world are suffering today and the nation of Israel by a decision made by Sarah, the mother of the Israelites, that I got a better plan than God and God didn't hurry up enough. And there's one person in all the world that's never, ever, ever had this circumstance, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to stick my, my, my foot out and say I would believe every person has stepped ahead of God sometime, somewhere in their life as a Christian. That's what Sarah does and what we do, that we are going to... Hurry up God's plan causes divorce. It causes bankruptcy. It causes financial hardship. It causes health problems. It does not give you the full benefit of what God had intended by us doing it better or quicker than God. Now, for me, nothing is more funnier. I'm driving down the road, or my daughter's driving down the road, and this guy goes flying by like he's operating a space rocket. And we're driving down the road to speed limit, and we end up at the same red light. <laughs> and I'm, you know, Florida, we keep our windows up. Florida cars have an air conditioner much more than a steering wheel. But when I was up in Connecticut where we would roll the windows down and you would have to I would get to the, I would stick my head out in the window and go, ha, 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 Because it's absolutely funny. You sped and we're at the same red light. But you know, when it comes to the Christian life, it's not so funny. It's horrible. That we have got a plan better than God's plan because we can't hurry up. God is patient. And that there are times maybe you've got the wrong career. You've got the wrong spouse. You're not in the right place where God wants you. And I mean lo location. There is a Christian woman somewhere today who is a, a single mother of children because she thought that that decision of that man was godly, it was correct. And she jumped God's plan for the husband that he wanted her to have, and now the loser's gone. And you have 
a Christian woman who is a single parent struggling because she said, like Sarah, God ain't doing it quick enough. Well, let me just do what I have to do. And friend, that's a sin. That's called impatience. And our life is to be like when we go to the doctor's office. And we go into the doctor's office and we go to the window, we check in. Hi, my, my name is Mr. Hayward. I got an appointment. And we sit in the waiting room. And we wait for them to call. We don't get up and open the door that's closed and go sit ourselves down in a room and expect, you know, the doctor to come in and say, oh, okay, let me take care of you. Now, I'm going to the foot doctor. My foot doctor, other doctors, but my foot doctor, he knows I'm going to be there that day. He knows on his list. He knows his patients. Today, this is the patient I'm coming. He knows you're coming. God knows you're in the waiting room. And God is long-suffering. And when God is in his correct time of dealing with people and events and, and activities and you, he will call forth to the Holy Spirit and say, open the door and let him into the room. And then you get in the room, you got to talk to the Holy Spirit, you got to talk to Jesus Christ and say, how are things going? How are you doing? What, what's going on? What's your concerns? And, all that. and God ain't going to come into the room right away like we want him to. And then the nurse, the Holy Spirit, walk out of the room and we're sitting there, you know, and waiting. Sarai is waiting. And she's not waiting quick enough. And she opens up the door and says, come on in, Hagar. And God's not going to come into the room when you bring in your, your activity. And even great men of the Bible. God had a plan for their life. Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Go to Rome. Oh, I'm going to Jerusalem. Holy Spirit told Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Abacus told Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. There was, there was a gathering of Christians saying, don't go to Jerusalem. What did Paul do? He did his own thing, and he went to Jerusalem. Now, he ended up in Rome. But man, there was a lot of years lost. There was a lot of trials and troubles and tribulations and chains. And there are, there are men uh, going in the ministry. They, they, they're studying the ministry, proper men. And they get to know, I'm going to start a church now. And God's like, I don't want you to start a church. I'm not ready for you to start a church. And you do a Sarai. You do a Paul. I'm going to jump ahead of God because God doesn't know what he's doing. And God doesn't work with that. And we sin, we rebel. And I think every Christian has done it somewhere in their Christian life that God has set forth the way. Pilgrim's progress. Pilgrim is to go to the heavenly city. And yet he ends up at Downing Castle. Because he went another way than God. Demas in the Bible said he, he's walking right with Paul. Says Demas, and he says Demas has forsaken me. Demas has another way. Peter is with Jesus, and Jesus is with the disciples. Oh no, Lord Jesus, don't wash my feet. Oh, Jesus washed me all over. I'm here to tell you that Stanley Hayward, I have in my life, and I've confessed and repented, I have stepped ahead of God. And I'm going to tell you what happens when you step ahead of God. You get baggage. You go around that, that, that path that takes long 
That path that is mud and 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 slippery slopes and 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 slippery rocks and and, and you and it's it's a burning trail. And then you come back to where you where God and you left. You left God and God stayed right there. You come back to that path and you walk up to God and God's like, how was it? How was it, Sarai? How do you feel now that you have put your husband to another woman? How's it feel? How's the baggage? Oh, no, 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 Sarai. You're not getting rid of that handmaid. She's coming back. And she's going to have that baby. And you're going to watch your husband and that woman and her, his son. And I'm going to tell you, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years later, that son is still going to be a burden to your children, the nation of Israel and the world, Ishmael and Arabians, the Muslims. A wild man. You <coughs> you want to go out as a Christian? You want to do things your own way? You want to meet with the wrong uh, sexual partner? You want to get a transmitted disease sexually? You can possibly pass that sexually transmitted disease onto your children. You can make wrong financial decisions as a Christian that God never wanted you to do, but you got a better idea, and you can ruin your whole family for life. You can ruin the country because we got a better plan than what God has. Listen, I pray for Donald Trump. God did not want Donald Trump in office. God wanted President Biden. And you're like, oh, but no. You know what could have happened if God gave you what you wanted? What happened to Sarah? Sarah got what she wanted, Sarai. And we ended up with an enemy of the world, a wild man called Ishmael. We don't want to wait. We all have a, a thing of impatience when it comes to God's plan. God will tell us something. God will reveal to us at times something that he wants in our life. And if it don't come quick enough, we're going to we're going to get up in the waiting room. We're going to open up the door. We're going to go get into one of the examination rooms and no one knows you're there. And we have a thing called a free will and and God will put up barriers like he did with Paul. God will put up with barriers like he did with Paul. God will put up with barriers like he did with Paul. But Paul went over the barrier. Paul went under the barrier. Paul went around the barrier and Paul messed up his life. And guess where Paul ended up? Right where God wanted him in the first place, but in chains, in a shipwreck being bit by a snake. Oh yeah, God helped Paul, and Paul probably got people saved. Paul, that, that, that I don't know what the man's name was on that island, he had the bloody flood. He was healed and all that. But Jacob sold to Esau a, a, pot, a, a pottage of, of food to gain Esau's firstborn right. But God doesn't know what he's doing that mom and Jacob has to deceive their father because God was unable to give Jacob that birthright that Esau sold. And that when we get to the New Testament, we read that God knew that Esau sold the pottage. Uh, Esau saw, sold the firstborn right for pottage. God knew that. And God even told us in the New Testament scripture that Esau sought it with 
tears of repentance of no true repentance because he didn't care. Now we got the story of, of Rebecca sends off her little boy because she deceived her husband, his father. And she's like, Jacob, you know, when, when your brother gets happy and he's all that and he settled down, I'll send for you. Rebecca never sees Jacob again. She's dead when Jacob comes home. Now, do you think God would have had a better way? You think that maybe for the fact is, and I don't know, but let's just say for the fact is that Abraham, uh, the, uh, Isaac sent Esau out to get some venison for the firstborn right. And had mom and Jacob made unleavened bread, make some cakes, whatever, because that's what kind of person Jacob was. You imagine that God said, you know, I'm just saying, I don't know. Esau's out there hunting for, for venison. And God said, you know, you sold that birthright. Oh, you don't care about that birthright? Okay. Mama Bear, take care of that boy for me, will you? Eat him. Hey, boo boo. We got ourselves an Esau picnic basket. Yum, yum. And then you would find, I, I'm just, listen, I'm speculating. I could, I'm totally wrong. But, hey, if God would have killed Esau out hunting like his father wanted him to do, guess who would have got the birthright? But Sarai had a different plan. Rebecca had a different plan. Paul had a different plan. Stiley has a different plan. You have a different plan. And we blow it out of proportion. Pilgrim had a different plan. And when we come up with our different plans as Christians, and we don't confess our perfect plan as a sin that God can't forgive and God can't cleanse us if we don't cleanse us, if we don't confess our sin, we end up at the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble. Rather, gold, silver, and precious stone, a crown, an inheritance. Because we have the better plan of God because we don't want to wait for God. I never done one. I never do anything like that. I'm Paul did it. Peter did it. Sarai did it. Abraham had the perfect thing too. Honey, yes. Will you tell them you're my sister? Because God can't protect me against the, the Egyptians. God can't protect us against the people of Gerar. So just lie to him, will you? You say, what, what, what kind of effect did that have? You know, Abraham told Sarai twice to lie about their their relationship. Rather than being husband and wife, he told, say, say, honey, tell me his sister. Okay. And she ended up in the arms of two different men that God had to step in. Now, Sarai lied and said, he's my brother. God changed the name of Sarai, and Sarai had a son named Isaac. Years down the road, Isaac is in Gerar. And he hadn't even been conceived yet. And he's in Gerar. And you know he tells his, his bride to say, Honey, Mama did it. Will you tell them you're my sister? Because God couldn't protect us. We'll, try, we'll trust in the God of lie. Satan, John 8, 44. And churches do it too. Churches will come up with their own way. We're going to have a tithing 
period where we're going to take context out of the scripture so we can get the people to tithe to the church and give their money. Where God told Paul to write, God loves a cheerful giver not to be grudgingly giving, where Paul doesn't even mention the word tithe. But we're going to go to a book under the law of Malachi and have you rob God. We're going to go all the way to Abraham with Melchizedek, who Amanda is the closest thing to Jesus Christ. If he wasn't Jesus Christ, he was a king, he was a priest, and Abraham gave tithes to him. Are you telling me as a pastor of your church you're a king and a priest, and you're the next thing closest to Jesus Christ? I've met pastors like that. You want me giving your names? That they were the next best thing to God. I have two pastors in mind right now. Both of them full of pride. That's not Jesus Christ. We jump ahead of God. And we have Bible examples. Of good men and women of God. Who said, God, let me take control. And you know what God does? I, I advise you not to. Oh, God, I, I can do this, God. But listen, just wait. No, 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 no. I, I, I got to have it now. You know, I'm getting old. No, no, come on, calm down, relax, get in your Bible, study your Bible. No, 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 God, I'm, okay. And God's like, okay. Go ahead and make a fool of yourself. I'll be right here. I'll stand right here. I ain't moving no further with you. When you come back, you're going to have all excess of baggage. And the very fact to show you that you're going to have baggage, I am going to have John write in the scriptures, if you confess your sins, I'll forgive your sins. I'll cleanse you of your sins. But be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sowed, that he shall also reap. Sarah, you know what you're going to have to reap? That baby boy. Rebecca, you know what you're going to have to reap? You're never going to see that boy again. Paul, you know what you're going to have to reap? You're going to be in jail. You're going to be in prison. You're going to have shipwrecked. You're going to have murder plots. You're going to say goodbye to your sister's son. You won't see him no more. Paul was in well. Paul was in fellowship with his sister's son that he had to bring word that the, the Jews were going to kill him. Demas, whatever happened to Demas? And what has happened to many Christians out there who have gone their own little path? And if you read Pilgrim's Progress, realize in, in, in the Doubting Castle, not only did the Pilgrim suffer, I forget which it was Faithful or the other, I forget the other companion, but he also suffered. Sarai, the wild man that, that was given birth by Hagar, her maid, by her husband, is causing all kinds of troubles and problems and situations. Today, you know, Esau still hates Jacob in conflict today. We're going to do things our own way. Uh, I'll okay, get one more. We it's thirty minutes. Uh, these are short. Thirty minutes is short for me. Here, here's another one. I'll give you one more example. In the Bible, the Bible says, says. Yes. You know, there's no other men around. And we, 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 we're not going to have any more family. What are you talking about? You see, God's un incapable of doing anything. See, God saved us. He did, yeah. So let's get Dad drunk. And let's sleep with Dad. And we'll have children by dad because God can't give us no men for us to get married and have proper children. 
And we end up with, with a race of people called Ammon and Moabites, who in turn become enemies of Israel. You see, we got a better plan. We'll use whiskey or alcohol and sex. That's Lot's children. And what is the statement when we come to the Bible in the New Testament? A remarkable statement made by James, I believe it is. That Lot was a just man. And his children, his children that are enemies of Israel. And let's look at his other daughters. All, you know, I got to, we'll go, you know, I won't pray. But look at that land of, of Sodom. Ooh, that's, that is some green grass over that side. And the Bible tells us that Lot went to his daughters, plural, and their husbands, his son-in-laws, and tried to tell them that the angels and God are going to destroy Sodom. And Lot left Sodom with family behind. And as he's running away, his wife turns into a pillar of salt because Sodom was a better and brighter place to be. And we leave, we leave just Lot According to the New, Te New Testament, we leave just Lot in a cave with incense of his two daughters. Because everyone had a better, bright, brighter idea. Now, what is the answer for Sarai? What is the answer for Lot? What is the answer for Paul? What is the answer for Demas? What is the answer for Peter? What is the answer for Stiley Hayward? What is the answer for you? Well, for today, for the Christian, as you get in your Bible and you study your Bible, you obey the Bible, you pray over your Bible, you pray for the things in your life, you wait on the Lord, you thank the Lord, you bless the Lord, you and get rid of self. And when you re when you sin, you repent of your sins and you pray more. And you read your Bible more, and you study your Bible more. And you listen, and you obey, and you wait on God. And let me close with a particular statement I have failed. And I'm not worthy even to preach and teach such a message where even I have failed. And I thank God for 1 John 1 9. And I thank God that God is able and will cleanse and forgive me of my sins. But the baggage, let me tell you, the baggage is not worth it. The scars ain't worth it. The destructed life ain't worth it. You're saved and going to heaven. Yeah, nothing's going to stop you from going to heaven if you're saved. 